What's happening, guys, and welcome to our weekly Impact review. I'm Keith, and I'm joined by Ro. What's going on, man? Not much, Keith. Man, how you doing? I'm doing all right. Now, what would you think about last night's show? I thought it was all right. I felt its, its purpose was more to uh, build towards rebellion since it's, what, a couple weeks away, right? I believe they said two weeks from Sunday. Yeah, so, I mean, like I said, I mean, there was nothing, you know, that really stood out. If anything, a lot of the angles, it was just to progress some of the matches that were getting at Rebellion. Yeah, no, no, I would agree with that. I, I, I thought it was a good, a decent show, though. I had no real, real problems with uh, most things. There were a couple things that were misses to me, but we'll get into those. Um, we had a lot of news this week, but uh, I think we will get to that after we do our review of the show sound good to you let's do it yeah because i think we're gonna have a, a at least a positive review of the show and then uh the news that might be a little different <laughs> all right so we open the show with uh moose versus wentz uh this was a fun match very similar to moose versus trey from a few weeks ago um you know david versus goliath type style match uh crowd got behind the baby faces the rest of the rascals were actually ringside for this match and uh they were utilized as well but obviously moose goes over here with the spear uh what'd you think of this here i like this i um uh, you know for some reason i had thought that moose was gonna catch him midair and do a spear which i thought would have really been tight but um yeah you know it just build builds towards the uh feud that moose is having uh with the rascals so one would assume I, unless they, I don't, I didn't catch if they announced it, but I'm guessing he's in the face. Des next, so um, not bad at all. Yeah, yeah, I don't think it's been announced, but yeah, no, I would assume that as well. Um, but you know, this was Wentz's only offense was when he was able to either outsmart Moose or move faster than him. There was no uh, ridiculous spots or anything like that. You know, and what's what's always great, what I love when they do some of the David versus Goliath is, especially when you see a guy try to do a Rana, like, really, you shouldn't be able to Rana a big dude. I mean, unless it's off the turnbuckle. Mm -hmm. So anytime they go for maneuvers as such and Moose is able to catch them, and or even when they do, like, uh, uh, dives and Moose is able to catch them, like, I like that type of storytelling where... You know, the the bigger individual is, you know, he's so much, you know, outpowers the smaller guy where a lot of the offense that the smaller guy can normally get on, over on someone else, it doesn't affect the big guy much. So they have to be a little bit more crafty. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I completely agree. I like the way they book that. Um, so we have Melissa interviewing Madison Rain. Madison wants to become a six-time knockout champion. Tessa ends up walking up. She runs her down. Tessa compares Madison to Gail, you know, reliving her glory days and whatnot. Uh, Madison then, of course, pipes up and says that she's 2-0 and against Tessa, challenges her to a match. Tessa accepts, and we will see that later on. So at least they had a reason to build the match, I guess. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's, it's better than just being randomly stuck in there. At least, you know, they went, I guess, the extra mile. Yeah, I mean it, it's something. I mean, I, <laughs> I I fi I figured you know they were gonna find a way to tighten because, in you know we, we both been watching you know then TNA for quite some time. Did they have a long feud between one another, uh, Gail and Madison? Uh, that I am not not completely sure of. I'm sure they've interacted you know before, but uh, well now it's yeah. a completely different uh playing field, so. <laughs> but you know the moment this was announced i uh didn't feel too great for tessa <laughs> yep 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 and we have uh some knockouts action sue young versus rosemary uh so this was rosemary's first singles match since her return right yeah because yeah. what the other uh, previous match it was the tag match right mm -hmm. yeah okay. that's right the uh precursor to the undead realm ending um and we had a uh very good crowd reaction for Rosemary. Not a huge surprise. She is one of the biggest fan favorites in the company. Um, Rosemary ends up hitting a spear. Undead brides get on the apron. She starts to take them out. This brings out Kiara Hogan to help Rosemary. Rosemary and her argue back and forth on the outside. The undead brides attack both of them. Match gets thrown out. Rosemary gets thrown back in the ring. Sue puts on the mandible claw. And then she hits a panic switch. Kiera is forced to watch this, and then Kiera ends up getting hit with a panic switch of her own. 
Um, so I guess Kiara Hogan is going to continue to be thrown into this. Yeah, I wish she wasn't because I think now, and I'm really surprised they still mention Allie by name. You know, now you know Allie's no longer with the company. I would prefer them not to mention her, but I guess, you know, it kind of goes with the story since they essentially killed her off. But yeah, I, I really think you could just do this between Rosemary and Sue. Like, Kara doesn't need any involvement. Like, she could be used somewhere else, and we'll get to it. But um, I guess this is where, this is where they want to use her. Yeah, I, I guess so. Um, I would assume this probably sets up a match between Sue and Rosemary at Rebellion. You know, that's fine. I, If anything, even though this match wasn't really much, I really like this for Sue because it gives Sue an opportunity to kind of be a player in, you know, the knockouts division again. Mm-hmm. Because you know, when you think about the whole undead realm, like she really was taking the back seat. It was really Alley at the forefront, well, Dark Alley. So now this kind of gives Sue, you know, puts Sue back in the light. And I think a feud between her and Rosemary, regardless of the outcome, it's going to help her. Yeah. Um think there's any chance that we get a uh, Kiara Hogan heel turn? Oh, you know what? And <laughs> when she came out and when I seen her, uh, I forgot what Rosemary did, but she smacked Rosemary's hand, uh, arm away. Right. I was like, uh-oh. Uh, uh-oh. <laughs> yeah. That's it. It's, it's going to happen. Calling it now. Uh, so yeah, we take a look I mean, back. Oh. It, it, may, it may be, you know, I guess if they go that route, then I guess it's just to put her in uh, Allie's place or would Allie would be had she still been around. Right, right. Yeah, I guess that, that would that would make sense. Uh, then we take a look back at United We Stand. Uh, then we hear from Ace Austin. He says last week he was about to gain victory over Jake Chris until Aiden Prince took that away from him. He says it looks so it looks like we're going to get a program between him and Aiden Prince. I don't know if anything actually happens down the road, but that's kind of what I got from it. So, I mean, if they do that, that's pretty cool. Cause I though that was something that you had mentioned a while back that, you know, a roster member picks up a feud with, uh, you know, one of the local talent from the promotion they're working with for the tapings. And you kind of do that throughout the, you know, the set of tapings to give new and fresh things. Yeah, you know, um, I know some people aren't fond of it, and maybe it's the way that you and I probably grew up watching wrestling, where the way that you see in a talent kind of get built up is they first f- face local or enhancement talent, then they move on to like lower level fuse and mid card, then finally, you know, get the top of the card. So I think there's nothing wrong with this. Um, Aiden Prince, obviously, well, to my knowledge, he's not a member of the roster. So, you know, small, harmless feud, you could put. Um, Ace Austin over, and you know it's not a problem. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Does no harm to anybody else. Um, then we have Willie Mack backstage, and he's joined by Killer Cross. Cross asks Willie if he likes jazz, and he goes into it saying that everyone in the band has to be perfect when it comes to their instrument. He says, "You know, someone who likes jazz, your buddy Richard Swan." Then he uses a familiar line. I'm sure you remember this, Row. He says, "I'm not telling you something you don't already know," and that was the. Great and the late great Sean O'Hare from his WWE run, uh, very underrated character, or I should say, it never lived up to its full potential when he had a uh, Roddy Piper as his manager. Um, but uh, Cross then says that people are starting to say that Rich is playing Willie for a few fu- a fool, and he says that Willie may want to think about the future. So I don't know if they're actually going to go with something here because uh, I would be down for seeing a Killer Cross and uh, Willie Mac feud. Oh, yeah. I mean, it gives them something. I mean, I really feel Cross is somebody that we should sh- see on the show a lot. And, um, you know, unfortunately, I know this is kind of like a side feud. I know a lot of people will talk about, you know, you don't need people revolved around the world title picture. But I think somebody like him should be. But, um, yeah, I'm interested to see how this plays out. I mean, because you think about with Willie since his arrival and impact, it seems like outside of the wins he's racked up against Ethan Page, you know, it's either been that or he's been kind of aligned with Swan and the whole OVE stuff. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. He's pretty much gotten the Ethan Page treatment. And I think uh, much like Ethan, he should be able to shine in a different environment, which uh, we will see a little later on uh, with Ethan himself. But then we have a, a Diener's promo similar to last week. 
Um, we actually get another one later on in the show as well. So they seem to really be hyping these guys up and uh, another addition to the tag team division. Uh, then we have the debut of the North versus Shelton Jean and El Verso. Nice to see the North actually tr- in true tag team fashion with matching gear. Uh, no surprise here that they end up picking up the victory. But uh, I must say, you know, I'm not too, too familiar with Josh Alexander. I've seen a couple of his matches probably on like a Twitch special. But uh, he looks really good in the ring, has a good look, and I like his move set. So I think he, he's going to do well in the in uh, his run with impact. And, you know, it's actually good to see Ethan page doing something, you know, dude has too much talent just to be wasted in random matches week to week. Yeah. I was really impressed with this team. Um, I think this kind of gives, well, not kind of, it gives Ethan some direction. He's not just kind of just out there fending for himself, you know, racking up countless losses. And I was impressed with uh, Josh Alexander. I had seen him originally compete against Killer Cross on Explosion. I thought, mm. you know, this might be a guy that they can get. I'm going to say this, though. The key to their success as a team, they need the company needs to be able to integrate some of these tag teams into the title picture where they actually perhaps win the titles like it can everything can't circulate around lax i mean they can keep bringing all the tag teams they want but if it's always going to be lax and lucha brothers competing for the titles it's not it's not going to make much sense like i think from what i see and obviously with the proper build the the this team should be tag team champions in oh yeah the next in the next six months if not that's an indictment on creative. Well, you know, you might have spoke a little too soon. You were not able to catch the whole show. So uh, in one of the segments in a little bit, we will get to that. Um, Melissa interviews Gail. Gail is going to get a closer look at the match between Madison and Tessa. So she will be at ringside. And then we have the North backstage. Ethan says that Josh Alexander has woken an Ethan Page that no one in Impact has seen before. They are here to take over the tag team division, and they do call out LAX and the Lucha Brothers. So, you know, maybe that that's uh, the direction, man. Well, I mean, just hopefully they follow up because we've seen this you know, time in and time out where, L- especially in LAX's case, where when they get when they're champions, they run through everyone, and then there's nothing left. There's nothing left, like. I just really think, just for any of these tag teams, whether you say it's them, the Deaners, uh, the Rascals, to lesser extent OVE, um, I, I think that's pretty much I named everyone. I feel like I'm missing someone. <laughs> like the key to their success is they need to be seen seen as viable threats to the tag team title picture. If everything's just going to revolve around one team and that one team running rush shot over everyone through everyone, I should say like, it's not going to make, make any difference, but I really think this is a team that if in six months, they're not tag team champions. I mean, they've already kind of dropped the ball with KM and Fala. That was one, one of the great misses of 2018, Mm -hmm. but if they miss on this team, just from what I've seen and look, this was the first time we seen them tagging in an impact ring. Um, you know, there's still probably more that we need to see. But just from my first impression, if they're not tag team champions within the next six months. That's that's bizarre. Yeah. Maybe, like many things. Well, you know, that is true. But no, I, I agree with you both. Good size, good in the ring. No reason for them not to be in that title picture sooner rather than later. And, you know, by the look of things that have happened well, for the last week or so, I wouldn't be surprised if they do end up getting pushed a little higher or quicker that I should say. But uh, then we have the much anticipated third match of Madison versus Tessa with Gail on commentary. So this match ends with Tessa going to grab a chair. Gail takes it from her. Madison rolls her up. Yeah. You know, first thing is they brought up that she was 2-0, and and then after she won, she's 3-0 and against Tessa. Now, look, I could see from the standpoint this was all to progress an angle between Tessa and Gail Kim. I get that. I just really feel you could have used someone else to get that win. Like earlier when we were talking about Kara Hogan, mm-hmm. or even if you wanted to use an Alicia, like for at least for them, that's a big win for them. Yeah, we know it took you know, a distraction roll up or whatever, but I just don't think Madison needed it. 
And it just leads you to believe, like, you know, a lot of people had thought, well, you know, when Madison was coming back, it was to help the knockouts. You know, she wasn't going to be pushed to the forefront. You and I thought otherwise. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, that, that, uh, um, the loss to uh, uh, Jordan Grace, which was a number one contendership, which is crazy. Uh, you know, you come back and you get a number one contendership. Like, yeah, because, you know, Jordan Grace, they, you know, management's high on her. And this was like their way of Madison getting her win back. The one point I will make is this, though. You know, she keeps taking shots at Ring of Honor and, you know, everybody's, you know, laughing and it's cool with that. Now, you just remember, though. Now, she she's going on air taking shots at Ring of Honor. Us as fans can't get mad when people go somewhere else, leave Impact, and talk shit on Impact. Mm -hmm. Because look, look what we're setting it, we're setting it up, you know. And if anything, Ring of Honor, Ring of Honor was using her like shit. And oh, yeah. it's like we bring her back, and then we, you know, put her in a role where you know she's, you know, pretty. Much, I don't want to say she's on top, but you know she's she's a in a, a prominent figure in the knockouts division. So I just always just think that's kind of like petty because we don't like it when other talents go to you know where a different company and trash impact but it's okay when the talents come to impact and trash their former employer yeah no i have to agree with you there i mean i, I get in the sense that they're doing this with the whole storyline thing of madison being you know the former not five-time knockouts champion and she was around during gail kim and so on and so forth but no i i agree i think someone you know Lower on the card should have gotten the rub for the win over Tessa. And, I mean, we're, what, two episodes into out of four from the uh, Canada tapings. And I believe they're hyping Madison versus Taya next week. So she's wrestling three times. And now and Taya's in a feud with Grace. So you can probably guess how that might go, go down. Mm -hmm. So... Like I said, you know, it's nothing against Madison. I just think, you know, her coming back, I mean, if they, and I know they probably don't have no low-level heel in the knockouts for her to work work with. I mean, and I guess because she's tied in with Rosemary, so could, you couldn't even do Sue Young. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, I don't I don't know if, uh, um, what's her name? Is it Katie? What, what's that girl's name? Oh, Katarina. Oh, Katarina. oh, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I, I was thinking Katie Lee Virtual, but I'm thinking mm. her name in Impact. Like, okay. I don't know if she she's still on the roster. Probably not. But, like, you know, work a low feud with her or something. But to kind of thrust her back in the mix and, you know, she didn't racked up. She's like, like I said, they made it clear she's 3-0 and against Tessa, mm -hmm. you know. But, I mean, it is what it is. Like I said, I think she's going to be primed where come Slammiversary, she's probably going to be getting a title shot. Well, I mean, on, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if um, Madison ends up picking up the victory over Taya, and then Grace picks up the title from Taya, and then we end up getting a feud between Grace and Madison over the Knockouts Championship. Well, there you go. Yeah, that's that. Um, then we have the Lucha Brothers backstage. Eddie and Eli walk up. Eddie says they beat LAX, so they should get a title shot. Sounds fair. LAX comes in, attacks the Lucha Brothers, and that's the end of the segment. I did not expect us to see Eli on TV after he was fired by the company on Sunday. Well, I mean, what can they do? I think when we seen this, was it, uh, I think, Alberto, when they suspended Alberto, where they had to scrap so much stuff since he was heavily involved. And I know we'll get into this more, but that's the thing, you know, when a guy or gal um, is leaves the company during the tapings or after stuff has been taped this is the outcome we're going to see somebody on her screen that a isn't a part of the company anymore and b however whatever angles he's in we're not going to really get no uh, conclusion of them all because you know with a pay-per-view coming up he's not going to be at the pay-per-view so no yeah very strange but um uh, yeah I don't know. I don't know if there was a good route they could have taken with this. So I guess they just used the footage they had. Um, then we had, like I said earlier on, another Deaners coming soon video. And we see Melissa interview the power couple. She says, Brian, uh, Johnny says, Brian is an incredible athlete, but a complete dumbass. Says he reminds the fans of themselves because they're dumbasses too. And that's why they want him as champion. 
Then Taya rubs it in his in Melissa's face, saying that Jordan and Cage look like a great couple, and that they, you know, she insinuates that they do more together than just work out. So, couples retreat, baby. <laughs> I mean, uh, I I know some people are high. I'm sorry, I keep referencing some people. You know, are high on this whole power couple heel stuff. To me, it's it's corny. It just comes across as corny, and I just can't wait till rebellion for this stuff all to end. Personally, well, you never know, man. There's still somebody waiting in the wings, so you <laughs> never know what there. And we're gonna get to that too in just a minute. Um, so we have Tessa back. Oh no, I'm sorry. We have an OVE video. Sammy says that. It's going to end at Rebellion. He's going to take the X Division Championship and then throw Rich Swan out on the streets. So more building there. And then Tessa's backstage, and she says Gail couldn't help herself tonight. She says Gail has made it personal, and Tessa says that she can make it personal too. So then we get another 3200 Arena promo, and they hyped RVD at least three times during this show. I mean... I feel like he's just he's going to be inserted in a top feud, man. Well, I mean, you have a right to feel that way. You know, we watch Impact enough to kind of get an idea when they're super high on someone. And this shows right here, like already. And we know we had talked about this, like he's going to be in some type of role when they go to Philadelphia, because mm-hmm. Philadelphia is considered, you know, that's the city where ECW um, originated from. And, you know, there, people aren't going to want to just see him in some regular match. You're probably going to want to see him in some sort of title match. So you're either talking about the world title or the X Division title. Now, depending what happens between Rebellion and when they take these shows, you know, we don't know what's going to happen with the X Division title because we know Johnny Impact um, has a number one contender ship. He had won a number one contender ship match at United as we stand. Now, whether they follow along with that, we don't know, but uh, that can play a, a pivotal role into that. And obviously, you know, the world title. So, yeah, it's going to be it's going to be interesting. Um, even just the outcome at Rebellion in both those matches to see where it kind of goes from there. But I'm pretty sure RVD is going to be involved in some sort. He's going to be in the main event or at least be heavily involved in those tapings and prominently featured. Yeah. I had just saw an article. It was on four eleven uh, wrestling that said that, I guess it was an interview with Callis. I think it was from the United we stand uh, Q and a session. And he said that, you know, RVD doesn't look like he missed a step and he was hyping him up and everything. So, I mean, yeah, I'm going to go with my gut instinct here. <laughs> but really, what is he supposed to say? Yeah, like, no, I, I know. But. <laughs> like, that, that's the thing, you know, and not to be like Debbie Downers or anything, but you have to understand, like, these people, you know, they're trying to get people to watch the product. If they go and say something, like, even when we talk about, like, TV deals, if they go and say, hey, we're perfectly content staying on Twitch, you know, we're not look, pursuing no TV deal, that's going to sour a bunch. But if they at least say, hey, we're trying, then at least, you know, the people who want them to be on TV will be like, hey, at least they're trying and stuff. So same thing. You're not going to say, well, you know, RVD is a little bit older now. So, you know, we have to be careful with him, how we use him, use him as a special attraction. That'll turn people off. But if you say, man, he could still go. He had missed a beat. All those people who, you know, ECW faithful or, you know, RVD fans. Oh, OK. You know, I got to catch him. So, yeah, I mean, he's just doing his job. Fair enough. Fair point. Um, but, yeah. And then we have follow Bob backstage. He is looking for Scarlet. She appears behind him, and then she says she hears he needs a tag team partner next week, and she has his back. So I'm guessing it's going to be her and Fala versus the Desi Hit Squad. So that's going to happen. I'm interested, though, how much interaction we see Scarlet with uh, um, the Desi Hit Squad. Yeah. You know, is it going to be one of those situations, you know, we've seen in – history of with certain tag teams where you kind of have and i know she's a wrestler obviously but like say you have the non-wrestler tagging with the wrestler so really it's a one-on-two most most times and then mm-hmm. the, the non-wrestler might come in and you know do a move and get the pin so you know but hey once again credit to follow man i mean i really hope his hard work doesn't go unnoticed you know really kind of getting himself in shape you know so 
you know, hopefully they they find some type of role for him. But if this is it, then, hey, you know, for the time being, I guess it's okay. Yeah, I mean, with KM not being there, I mean, we don't know what his status is, but at least at the tapings in Canada, they could have just left to follow off TV, but they didn't. So it's good to see him doing something. Yeah, I agree. Then we had the main event, which was Johnny and Taya versus Cage and Jordan. I thought this match was pretty entertaining for what it was. Um, you know, I mean, this feud's been going on for quite some time, so they have been dragging it out a little bit. But uh, I thought what they did here was good. What did you think about this? Yeah, I mean, it, like I said, it was mainly just to advance um, both feuds for the pay-per-view. Um, it was interesting because it was billed as a mixed tag. And you notice right when um, I think there was a sequence where Cage got in the ring and then <laughs> Johnny went to Taya mm-hmm. and automatically Grace had to come in the ring. So it kind of just lets you know that at least for the time being, they're not really entertaining the whole intergender thing. Like they might do, you know, do have a one-off here and there, but that's not their main thing. So, but yeah, um, just to build up towards, toward, towards the pay-per-view, um, we've seen another sh- turn, <laughs> you know, this time a referee and it looks like they were trying to play up the story is like, Hey, he's the same referee who refereed at homecoming and you all know, the other spe- matches. I think they yeah. said, you know, I get them and they appreciate them doing that line of storytelling. But if that's the case, I think the turn, they should have turned him before, not wait all the way up till now. And I get why, because now one would assume that we're probably going to get a different referee for the main event at Rebellion. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I, I just, you know, and then let alone he interfered in the match. I mean, he got, he was part of the outcome of the match, you know, he yeah. cl- uh, clip clipped cage and i'm surprised they let cage lose to just a move like that i'm surprised johnny didn't hit the uh, moonlight drive or something yeah he hit he hits a it, it's similar to eddie's like boston knee party i guess it yeah. was just like a running knee but then i don't know if he fast counted it or not but um, he did he yeah, did yeah so then cage ends up getting up and he starts to go after johnny bravo and then taya comes in the ring and low blows brian cage and that's when they make the connection that he was the ref at homecoming and so on. But, um, yeah, I mean, you know, Johnny played the chicken shit heel here. And I think that's the role he has to assume considering he doesn't or it doesn't seem like, you know, Cross is there or Moose that has his back like a big guy that can match up with Cage physically. Well, he has Taya. <laughs> right. You know, you notice he, he hides behind Taya and. You know, what I just found odd was they were double teaming Cage, and I was like, where's Grace in all of this? Like, you would think Grace would, would go and uh, um, go go and uh, attack Taya. Well, and, you know, I, and I'm, I, it has me wondering, too, you know, and I'm sure we're not going to see it, but, you know, are we ever going to see Cage attack Taya? Because, you know, she's always, you know, <laughs> going out of her way to low blow in, join in on the double team with Johnny, like, you know, maybe toss her into the crowd like Cross did, you know? Yeah. So. Uh, probably not. But, uh, I mean, as far as the Jordan point you were making, I mean, I feel like in this day and age, no company knows how to book baby faces properly. So, I don't oh, know. Oh, no. Yeah, you're, you're, you're right. You're, you're, I think it's all about Mo- the cool heel. That's why everyone turns. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Which is why we had the turn right here, I guess, with the referee. Uh, I don't know. I guess it's another thing that Johnny has in his back pocket, and that's how they're going to play it. Yeah, I, like I said, I'm just kind of ready for this that rebellion to kind of just come to a conclusion. I, I feel it's kind of been dragged out. And, I mean, obviously, we kind of know what the outcome is going to be. I doubt that they do anything else. And that's just my problem with certain certain individuals this company wants to get behind. This even ha- happened with Johnny when Johnny was chasing the title, getting shot after shot after shot after was shot. Was that shot. against Eli when he had the cha- championship? Uh, okay, he got shots there, but that Don and then one then there then. But no. even with uh, uh, Austin, I, I I forgot. I mean, did he feud with Eddie too? I I don't remember. But the point of the no. matter is, he he kept getting title shot after title shot, and you know I think sometimes it's cool if like say you have them take a detour where they got to kind of work their way back up the ladder, and then getting a shot like that. 
But we we've kind of just seen this, and to me, it's just as a fan, I'm watching. It's like it's obvious you want to put the belt on this guy. That's why he keeps, you know, uh, 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 getting shot after shot. There's nobody, no other threats. It's just like the pathway is just for him to, you know, be anointed and, and stuff. So, you know, I'm just ready. Just you know, get it over with, crown cage, and yeah, just move well, forward. Yeah, that's absolutely the thing. Is they don't have any other baby faces built up to face Johnny if he did happen to retain, except for, you know, the guy they're hyping. Yeah, yeah, but that's that's the on the company. Oh because, no, no, I know. <laughs> I mean you keep turning, you know, keep turning people. I mean, what do you what do you expect's gonna happen? And you don't want to do Hill versus Hill. And then not only that, I think what they do or at least where I you know where I feel is at times when they want a certain person, like just say, for example, if I'm just going to use Fala, okay? You might have the audience that prefer to see Fala, you know, uh, face Johnny than Cage, and that's going against what they want because they want Cage to be the guy. So in order to avoid that from happening, it's like, okay, let's push these guys away. Like Cross, you, and I think you had mentioned it too, that that uh, it was split. Like some of the fans were cheering Cross. They don't want that. They mm-hmm. want everybody to be on Cage, so... You know, you push cross away, you know, moose away, you push everyone away. And, you know, they're putting all their eggs in a basket with Cage. So, yeah, that eventually it's going to lead to the same thing that it always does. Yep. So, I mean, yeah. like but I said, I mean, I'm just re- ready for it to just happen and we move forward. Yeah. In the sense, there is the distinguishable baby face and heel in this feud right now. Mm-hmm. For now. <laughs> for now. So that was the show. Um, so I guess we'll get into the Eli Drake news, huh? Let's do it. All right. So I got back into Impact in the middle of 2017, like full time, like I was watching on and off for a little while. Um, and uh, who do you think was the guy that drew me back in? Eli Drake. <laughs> yep. What wrestler do you think I own the most t shirts of? That's not an insult. That's a fact of life. There you go, man. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, it, it's, it, it sucks. Um, I feel like, you know, the situation seems like it could have been handled a lot differently. Um, just kind of up and firing the guy. I think, like you had mentioned, suspending him and making him ride out the rest of his contract was probably the right way to go. You know... And we're, we'll never know the true details of it all. I thought, like, the one thing to do, just because knowing that you have this guy, he's going to be appearing on your TV screen. It's not no scenario where, like, Ali, uh, you know, you guys had already announced that you weren't going to resign her or talk with her. So even though it was announced she signed with AEW, you know, they wrote her off that one. She only appeared that one show, and then that was that. Mm-hmm. that. But with Eli... You got him in a storyline where he's teaming with Eddie and, you know, he's on these tapings. Okay. And obviously the conclusion of the storylines, you know, more than likely was going to come up to rebellion. Now I get, I get why they felt the need to do what they did, but I just thought to protect themselves from looking silly because now you know, he can easily appear on TV elsewhere. I know they're trying to go and file something, which I think is petty on their part. I think if you felt that you were going to terminate him, I thought suspending him and just letting his contract expire was a way to go. That way you protect yourself from mm-hmm. him appearing out, you know, appearing somewhere else, you know. But, you know, they felt that this was the route to go. I, I'm just like this. Look, I get it. You know, Impact wants to take a stand because in, you know, the past, you know, people have went in and, you know, done whatever they want. But I just asked for consistency. And I feel like with Eli, like there's obviously there was some sort of a, a I, I'm, I'm pretty sure management and Eli, they didn't get along mm-hmm. because the way they went after Eli, I felt like it was kind of personal, too. And all I ask is consistency with this, because. This isn't the first time we've seen something like this happen, and it sure to hell isn't going to be the last time. Yeah, I always bring up the Austin Aries thing, for example, because that happened on live pay per view, and you know what? We didn't hear nothing about it after. Like Mm-mm. we seen Austin flip 
dawn off and say all types of stuff and you know even stemming from that weekend leading up but towards the hall of fame and all this and that like all that stuff that was occurring and you know they try to play like it was part of a storyline when in reality reality back they knew backstage that he wasn't coming back we didn't hear anything though you know they didn't say no he's been terminated and stuff we're not going to tolerate this and and that's just my thing. I want to see consistency with it. If we're going to be consistent where uh, talent acts out, hey, you know, we're, 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 cutting, we're cutting ties, fine. But we know that's not going to be the case. They're going to pick and choose. Hell, I'll, I'll use something different. RVD had some uh, type of interview I had heard on Hillcast, and I recommend you guys um, listening. Check out the most recent Hillcast. It's, it's pretty good. Yes. You know, you know, honest, you know, opinions and whatnot. But, you know, they were saying, I think something that RVD, it just seemed like he was just kind of in it for the money, you know, mm-hmm. and and stuff. And, you know, you're giving interviews. You haven't even well, appeared out, you know, at least in Impact. He's talking like, oh, you know, I didn't even know they still existed. And maybe it was out of context. We, you know, we don't know. A lot of times, sometimes uh, um, when people um, pull out, you know, tidbits from interviews, you know, they can, you know, can misconstrue some things. But, you know, he... Just pretty much just like, oh, okay, you know, like it doesn't seem like he's all in, you know, but we're fine with him with that. Whereas with Eli and like Eli was just giving his opinion. Someone had asked him, you know, about with the whole intergender thing. And I get it. Him deciding not to be partake in that match with Tessa. Yeah. You know, it's kind of crazy. You know, you're <laughs> you, they, they want you to do something. You tell them no. Now, we don't know. Eli might have found out on twitter just the moment they announced it now i don't uh, i just want to stop you there for one second um because if that is the way that he did find out well originally the united we stand show was supposed to take place with house of glory and they have a like strict curfew in that area so the whole venue and everything had to be moved to new jersey where they could do it at the same time and i believe all the wrestlers found out about that on twitter as well because that was right after uh, Sanjay had departed the company and he seemed to be that line of communication between the management and talent. So I feel like that could have been a situation. And I don't know about you, but if I found out about something that way that I was never asked permission about, considering it's such a gray area in the wrestling world, um, yeah, I'd be pretty pissed about that as well. Oh, no, absolutely. Absolutely. And I know, you know, the argument is, well, you know, at your job, if you tell somebody, if you're not doing your job, they'll fire you. You know what's the difference between a job and, you know, wrestlers, independent contractors? When you're unhappy at your job, you can leave. You can put in your two weeks and that's it. Mm-hmm. As a wrestler, you can ask for your release, but they don't have to grant it. So I, I do feel like with Eli, I, I thought the only place he was wrong in all this was putting that picture up to support his uh his reasoning for why you know intergender why he's not down with it like because i think when you involve you know you know a picture of two individuals now i don't think cross said anything to him you know i don't think cross you know cross made such a big deal about it but it was grace who was offended because you know she competes in it and mm-hmm. then that's when it really took a turn for the worse he wasn't attacking grace he was just using an example yep. and, and like jimmy I said, jacobs got involved and yeah and like i said where he probably was wrong was using the picture mm-hmm. i think had he not used it i i had no problem with him using the picture because he was just using an example but you know you got people's faces on there so okay i can see and then you know you know, Grace says something and he responds to her. He's not disrespecting her. He just responds. Then Grace's man jumps into the equation and mm-hmm. says something in the lines of like, you wrestling makes me gag. And of course, Eli's going to defend himself. Like, you know, who are you? And then, you know, that pisses people off. And, you know, at the end of the day, it's just one of these things like this. If you're a fan of Eli, you know, like I'm a fan of Eli too. He was my favorite guy mm-hmm. in Impact. I am um, at a school I used to train at, um, Nine years ago, he used to uh, wrestle there with a cage. And I had always said, man, this guy's going to be in TNA one day. And then once he made it, I was like, wow, you know. And um, I'm bummed. I'm not I'm not going to lie to you. I'm bummed. And it's like now the only guy that I have that you know, I really like is, is Killer Cross. But, you know, you're going to have some people who, you know, some people are loyal to the brand. You know, they feel like no one person is irreplaceable, you know, irreplaceable. 
like I get that, but the problem is we see now the company isn't churning out stars like it used to be. I think when they were making stars and showing and a willingness to create new stars, yeah, you can go by that. Like, hey, you know, we lose someone, we got another star waiting in the wings. Mm -hmm. We don't have that anymore. No. You know, it's a certain selective few, and they just kind of ride that out, and they're chasing established names. So we're not seeing new people in the mix. You know, so that that that's the thing. So, um. It sucks. I think I really don't think him being fired will affect him signing anywhere else. I kind of believe like, you know, just just my opinion. I think the perception of impact from, you know, with other companies, they don't think highly of the company or let alone Don. But uh, yeah, it, it's, it's just a bummer. Yeah, for sure. And it, it, you know, you say that talent is replaceable it always felt like eli was a step above the rest of the talent in terms of being a polished roster member the guy could go in the ring he could talk on the mic and we don't really have anybody else like that i mean yeah you could use cross or something like that but are we actually going to see the trigger pulled on him <laughs> probably not and yeah. there, there was a rumor that he wasn't pleased that he wasn't on united as we stand so that's something to look at but it looks like, too, when you look at the roster now, you know, and what Eli, what I thought would make Eli so awesome was, you know, he was a polished wrestler. You know, he was all about the look and knowing how to talk. You know, if you're somebody that's all about work rate, yeah, he probably wasn't the best, but he was more of a showman. You know, some of the greatest showmans, you know, you look at The Rock or, um, you know, Stone Cold, they weren't like mat technicians by far, but, you know, they know how to, you know, put on a great show. Um, we're seeing now it's kind of like a similar style like it really just screams indie you know like indie indie uh, style wrestling and mm -hmm. that's not a knock but i mean you know usually for television you don't expect to see indie you know indie style stuff you know everything's so spot heavy and and whatnot so yeah. you know it, it, it it's something i mean it's kind of one of those things and like i said you know i've seen there's i think this is probably been the biggest divide that i've seen amongst fans because you got some of them that are like so down on the company for doing that i mean there's even been some who think dawn and company should be fired for it um a little extreme <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i mean i you know i'm vocal about it i think they're the worst regime that we've had since just because you look at where the company's been going and it's all happened under their watch. Maybe that's unfair, some of the stuff. But, you know, they lost the TV deal. They've been losing talent here and there. Um, the partnerships that we have, it seems more that they're used to host shows than it is, um, you know, more as talent a talent exchange. Yeah. You know, so it's just we're just seeing everything. And it just doesn't seem like, you know, it's going up, up. And that's just my take. You know, there's plenty of people who love everything and believe that everything's going in the right direction and that's fine however the company can't grow if the, the general consensus is everything is perfect mm -hmm. like it's okay to have a little bit critiques i really do believe that you know and they stopped doing them for some reason the, the surveys but i really believe like if if fans were able to tell impact like hey you know why don't you do this why do they'll listen because in, just like any company, you want to please the fans. But, you know, if you're telling me, hey, everything's fine, don't change anything, everything's fine, there's no need to improve. Right. Yeah, and um, I think that was another thing with, uh, I guess, Eli was speaking in a negative light of the company, talking about the intergender wrestling and not being able to draw in casual viewers. And that kind of segues into our other news about Impact constantly saying that they're looking for a new TV deal, which it's interesting because where they're sitting right now it just doesn't seem like that is feasible and the simple fact that you hear a lot of people talk about digital is the way to go and things like that and why would we care about a tv deal if that's what they're doing now like i said i don't think it's going to be one of those things they're not going to straight out say no we don't care about it this time they're going to do their due diligence and they're they're probably waiting to see what aew does or well, part because, you know, if AEW is able to land on a station, you know, I know it's been rumored about TNT. Um, <laughs> I'd be careful with that because, you know what, you got people really hyped. And, you know, if they don't land on TNT, you know, that's going to kind of be, you know, a slight against them. But, you know, they're going to look at that and, you know, they might try their hand. But I think they're perfectly fine with the digital. 
I mean, a lot of the fans have probably told them, hey, you know, this is great. There's no need for cable. So, you know, they're going to stick with it. It's going to take up until fans voicing their displeasure for them to make changes. As long as fans keep saying everything is fine, everything is great, they're not going to change. We see this in other promotions. I even speak on WWE. I mean, even though they don't commit fully to it, I mean, when fans voice enough of their displeasure, they'll make some sort of changes. You know, like I said, they're not going to go all the way in, but they try They try to listen to some extent. But, you know, telling Impact, hey, everything's awesome. Everything's awesome. Everything's awesome. Okay, well, we don't need to change anything. Everyone thinks it's awesome. But you notice, too, when they were having the surveys and a lot of people were voicing, hey, get rid of the GWN or, mm-hmm. you know, reduce it. And now they started reducing it. I, I don't know this week. Did they show the full thing or did was oh, it short? I think on Twitch they do show the full thing. Oh, okay. Well, my, my mistake. But yeah, but know, back when I they remember, were on Pop, it was just a condensed version. They had moved to that. So, you know, they're listening to the fans, you know? So, like, it, it's just those, it's just those things. And, you know, the last point I wanted to touch on Eli real quick is I believe Eli did what he did to get out of their con- to get out of his contract. Mm-hmm. Was it the best way to do it? Probably not. But, you know, he probably was looking at it as... You know, I got to wait till May 31st. You know, they're probably not going to use me, you know, after this whole Eddie stuff, which is unfortunate to Eddie because now what do you do with Eddie? But, um, you know, that was a way of, of getting out. Like they took the bait. And, you know, now he, he's a he's a free agent. So, yeah, um, yeah it, it, it's just kind of just one of those things. I personally believe, you know, and maybe it was a for financial gain. Like, why did Eli resign with the company like it was kind of obvious that they had no big plans for him i mean you see they brought austin aries in and took the belt off of him right away right away so so that spoke volumes and i just kind of just believe like they should have had a conversation eli management and talked about his future and when they when they realized that he wasn't going to be part of you know, the, some of the bigger plans, they should have just mutually parted ways. And then there you go. Instead of having this whole nasty, nasty thing, because, you know, it might not be a big population of people. Well, you know, we'll never know that actual number, but I'm sure this turned some people off. If you were somebody that, that uh liked Eli and he was the only reason why you were watching impact, like, because let's face it, sometimes some people you followed you know the re- you might follow certain wrestlers you know certain and that's what brings you to watch the certain company mm-hmm. they get rid of all your favorite wrestlers and there's nobody on the roster that you care for why are you going to watch because you're essentially watching people you're not invested in so you know if there were people who are only watching for eli those people are gone and we've seen you know you see some of these dips in numbers like the ec3 fans you know like that i'm sure that you know um uh, we end up losing some of those fans, like mm-hmm. you know, Alley fans, et cetera, et cetera. So it's just a whole whole ordeal. Just like many things, it could have been handled different. But I think the pettiness on Impact's part to try to um, prevent him from appearing on TV, like you made the decision to fire him. You should have thought that thought that out before you kind of just dropped the hammer. But they wanted to be transparent, you know, and, and act like they were taking a stand and stuff. But they now want to be petty. So yeah, and you know. You bring up the point that consistency and it, it seems like Eli was completely done with the company and that they wouldn't bring him back. But I mean, some of the guys that they've let go in the past, I wouldn't be surprised if they're back. It's like an Austin Aries. Oh, or El Patron. That's what I say. You know, you pick and you know, you pick and choose this cherry picking mentality. And, you know, I'm sure there's a uh, you know, a population of the fan base that will welcome those guys back in open arms and stuff, despite you know, the stuff that they did. And like, like I said, it's just all, it's all consistency with a lot of things with this company. You know, like I mentioned with Madison, you know, she can go on air and talk bad or, you know, we've seen it even back in the TNA days where people would come in and trash WWE. But then when somebody goes over there and trashes impact, you know, Oh, you know, why are they doing that? We made you like, you can't have it both ways, you know, like that's the thing. So, yeah, it, it it's gonna be interesting to see what happens moving forward uh, post rebellion. But um, I'm interested to see what what Eli does next. I know it was rumored that he was AEW bound. I mean, now he can appear at um, double or nothing. Du- double or nothing. Well, so um, that's if they don't go after him. But again, that 
that would fall back on them. This would be the I, whole Matt Hardy situation all over again. I doubt personally that they do anything. I think they just kind of just put that out there, you know, to, to to make it seem like they're transparent. I mean, why do that? I think they're trying to try to get back in the good graces because on PW Torch too, and I know some people, you know, look at them as being negative, but apparently Impact has a, a reputation of like saying one thing and not following through with some of their partnerships in the past. So I don't know the truth to that, but I, I kind of believe like the reputation probably ain't all you know, the best. Yeah. Are you talking about the current regime or like past regimes? I'm thinking I'm talking about the current regime. Oh. I really don't think, you know, and, and like I said, and I try to put away my own personal feelings. It's like, I really don't think like Dawn is probably like well regarded in, with some of these other companies. That's well, just my, my take, though. I mean, there, there's that. And also, and I brought this point up to you offline as well. And you have Dawn, you have Scott, and you have Ed and whoever else is there. And it doesn't seem like anybody is fully invested everybody has other ventures that they're doing you have scott with what is he with bcw or destiny or whatever he's got and then you have don who still works with new japan and he's got he's doing all stuff he's and ed's got other ventures too and it just seems like no one's complete focus is impact yeah i mean they and that's why you kind of hate losing an, uh, an abyss and Sanjay. I know mm-hmm. they keep plugging, plugging in different people with Conan and Dreamer and you know whoever else. But and their schedules are completely booked <laughs> up as well. You know, you need a person. You know, you need people that can just commit solely to Impact. When you have other ventures, I mean, you're only going to give so much time to Impact because you got to focus on you know some of these other other uh, ventures. So. Yeah, I mean, you know, like I said, at at the end, it's unfortunate because when it's somebody that you like or, you know, we both just had mentioned that, you know, it was our favorite wrestler on the roster. It's like, dang. But the writing was on the wall. They were never going to use him to the capacity that, you know, some of us would have preferred. I really think at minimum, even if you weren't going to put the title on him, he could have been a guy that you kind of put in between or like Mm -hmm. just say even with the Johnny stuff, even though if you wanted to do Johnny versus Brian cage, you know, you could have had Eli face Johnny, Johnny goes through Eli, then face Brian cage. He could have been used as, as that guy, but you know, yeah, it it is, it is what it is. And I know uh, the final, the final point is, I know you had mentioned, you had thought maybe, um, uh, PD, you had thought, you know, maybe did PD, uh, say something to management Mm -hmm. about, you know, about it. You know, I think to have a podcast in for, you know, Eli to go on there and be able to talk freely, they had to be well aware. You know what I mean? Like he would have probably told him, like, hey, don't mention this like that. But I, I, I don't even think P's going to be around much longer, to be quite honest, you know, but. Yeah. yeah. And there's only one other thing I really want to bring up about the whole situation. It was just a couple of fans had talked about it on Twitter um, with. Eli not willing to participate in the uh, intergender match. And back in, I want to say, August of last year, Eli wrestled a Twitch special against Joey Ryan. And they said, oh, you're willing to do this with Joey Ryan, but not with Tessa. And that was a month after he assigned an extended deal. So he probably thought, hey, I'll stick it out. I'll do what's best for the company. But at this point in his you know, career with Impact, he probably was like, this is stupid. Why am I doing this? Well, and then it's just, it's just, yeah, I mean, I guess if you want to point that out, but we seen with Tessa, you know, she dominated Joy Ryan, but lose it, lost to Madison Rain for the third <laughs> time. So, I mean, you know, like, and that's my thing with the intergender matches, the ones that I see, like, I feel like it only, only goes one way. Like, I've yet to see a, a I, and I guess you want, you could use a disco one, but disco's a comedy wrestler, but I've yet to see one where the female participant is playing the underdog role you know a lot of times i see it's oh she's dominant and the guy's just kind of you know i don't want to say getting tossed around but you know his offense really doesn't matter and i think for it to be believable you're gonna have to have some type of scenarios where the guy is just overpowering the girl and beats the girl just you know cleanly but you know, from the the ones that I've seen, I've never seen that. It's always a girl getting offense. And I mean, if you're a fan of women beating men, you know, I do believe there's some type of fetish. Hey, to each his own. I'm not one to criticize and have at it. But I like matches where where it's 
it's either going to be a 50-50 or one is just, you know, has mm-hmm. the advantage over the other. So, yeah, um, like I said, I think what I've seen with a lot of people and I see it's a trend now, you know, people leave Impact, oh, we don't need you. And, you know, they trash them on their way out. And, you know, talent see that. And don't think people on the roster don't think, you know, think that. I, I really didn't like Jordan Grace, you know, throwing in her two cents. I'm thinking to myself, you know, you're new, you know, and I don't he wasn't attacking you. He was just trying to make a point why you guys couldn't talk privately offline and kind of discuss it as being coworkers. I don't know. I think going to Twitter, that's the thing to do. You want to make everyone aware, you know, and get the validation of your followers and whatnot. Mm-hmm. So and I, I hate that shit personally. Like, I think, you know, using your celebrity to, to, and I mean, I know he's a celebrity in his own right, but using your celebrity to kind of just pile on somebody, like, that's coward shit to me. Because it's like, if you can't stand on your own two feet, then, you know, don't be saying shit. But, yeah, it's just the, just the whole ordeal. And, you know, you just, you just wonder what the future with this company, the way that it's headed. I'm not saying it's going to be the end or, you know, Eli leaving's going to be end, but, like we always have mentioned, there's options now. What mm-hmm. Impact had to ride on for so many years was they were the, they were the facto, option. <laughs> they were the de facto number two. And you see, too, with people taking shots at AEW, if AEW wasn't nothing, people wouldn't even say anything about it. But, you know, you hear with the TV deals and some of the people they bring on board, you know, I think there is a worry for some that if they launch off, like, that's going to take the attention away from you know, said promotion. Yeah. No, I, I think you're absolutely right. Um, is that where you want to end? Yeah, that's pretty much. I mean, that was kind of like the biggest, you know, takeaway from the week. And yeah, it, it kind of overshadowed a great show from last week, too. Yeah, it did. Yeah, that news hurt. I'll definitely say that. But uh, all right. I guess that is our show for this week. Ro, thanks for joining me once again. And uh, we will see you guys back here next week. So until then, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks, guys. Bye.